Guys, I'm no longer a boy. I have <laughs> oh. become a dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have now become the rightful owner of a 10-week-old dash under puppy called Freya. We picked her up on the Saturday and we... Right, I'll, I'll tell you the whole story of why it was an event. Left oh. the house about half past 10. Um, started driving up, got to Leicester Forest East Surface Stations. And then all of a sudden you just hear, bur- you just smell burning. We go over to the hard shoulder and the tire is basically blue. So we like pull up into the Leicester Forest Surface Stations. We're there for about four or five hours waiting for, maybe about close to four hours, waiting for either the RAC to come out or just the tire people to come out. Paid £5.80 for a fucking BLT. That was depressing. Um, then we did the uh, drive up to Scunthorpe, you know, met the family and all the dogs. They were lovely. And yeah, that's our first time meeting Freya in the flesh. And then it was a two hour drive back. She did not wee. She did not poo. She didn't cry. She had a bit of a play. She was very, very well behaved in the car journey back. And yeah, so I've now become an actual dog owner for something which I am responsible for. So I've Not- always grown. I've always grown up with dogs. Like my, um, when I was a baby, my parents had a German Shepherd called Kim, and then when she then passed away, we then tried a rescue dog called Sheba, and we had her for about a month before my parents just gave up because she was just an absolute crackhead. Like she was just she she would just leap over like stair gates and would go for the door anytime someone barked. So we had to unfortunately send her off. We then had a pair of border collie puppies, Shadow and Lucy. They kept fighting to each other, so we then donated Lucy to someone. So we then kept Shadow. Shadow then bolted and we kept attacking the bins. So then he went on his merry way. And then we got oh. another German Shepherd called Rosie, and we had her for 14 years before she passed away. And then my parents then got the little pug called Lily, who is still with us now. She's an absolute bitch. She's deaf as shit. She's dumb as shit. Her favourite toy is a ripped-off arm from a teddy bear. She loves clothes and then she'll just lay on clothes and she won't let you do the washing. And then obviously now living with my with my partner, you know, it's always been a dream to have her own dog. And, you know, Saturday was the day we became fur- furry parents. So now you have to become a duke so you can name yourself after the Dark Souls 2 boss, like the Duke's dear Freya. The, 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 the Duke's Freya. Yeah, I, I, when we were proposing names, at first I was going to go for Frida, you know, from the Dark Souls 3 DLC. But I thought at first she was hesitant off the name Freya, when I, especially when I said it's, near, it's near, you know, a giant spider from Dark Souls 2. Um, <laughs> or it's the first thing that comes into mind, isn't it? I know. That's why especially I thought, when it's going away to furniture. It's like, oh, no. That's why I thought of Frida at first, just because that was a really awesome boss fight. Because originally we was going to call her something like Nova. But when you're thinking of names, you've got to be considerate of how they sound. Because if you said Nova, obviously the first part of Nova is no, which is obviously a command for telling them mm. no. So if you said Nova, she'll probably be like, shit, is that no as in stop what I'm doing? Or Nova as in that's my name. So that's we went true, for Freya. Yeah, yeah like, there's all sorts of stuff which we didn't really consider. Well. So yeah, I'm... Um, um, I'm a dad. <laughs> in, 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 you're a fur dad. I'm a fur dad. Yeah, so not, not we've already established that. We're, yeah, we've already established that Lacey is the one she's most drawn to, but I'm the one she wants to play rough with or beat up. I find, so already, yeah. yeah, you find that pets are like that. It's like when I come home from work, my dog, she she knows what time it is. She knows it's time for her food. She knows who feeds her in the mornings and she knows who feeds her in the evenings. Mm. So and I don't, I, it's, it's near enough. As soon as I'm back, the first thing I do is feed her because, well... <laughs> She wants her food, so but you know, animals animals know these things and yeah. Yeah, Ross yeah. is just exactly the same. He's got two settings, asleep or really excited to see me because he knows he's gonna get food. Pretty much. Yes, yeah, so she no in between. knows when it's food, but so we've given her like a slow feeder, which is doing its trick. Um but the one thing which we did get, we got her like a set of stairs to make it easier for her to get onto the sofa and she knew straight away what to do with those. But then because she knew exactly what to do with these mini stairs, she thought, Oh, there's a big set of stairs there. I'll go zooming up those. And she fucking did. So we had to like quickly like border up the stairs and be like, okay, shit, we need to get a stair gate because otherwise she's going to go zooming up the stairs. <laughs> We've had to literally reorganise the living room because she got stuck behind one of the chairs. So we had to move one of the chairs into the corner, mm-hmm. replace it with the bookshelf, move a cage into the other corner, redo some of the wiring to make sure it's not within biting range. Yeah, that is oh true. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah there's oh. lots of places dogs and cats can get stuck that you don't realise they can do that. Mm. <laughs> like, How the hell do you even achieve that? Rossi once got stuck in 
under and left to the tables and still not sure how. <laughs> well, she's a dachshund puppy. She can literally just fit under anything. It's, it's, yeah, so it wouldn't surprise... Well, because at the moment, obviously she knew how to go up and down the stairs. And now she's so confident on the stairs, she jumping, she's jumping off of the third step. I'm just like, you fucking don't do it. So, yeah, it's, it's a, like, obviously I find it like that puppy whine when, they, when they're when they needy or want something really tugs against me. So, like, we're trying to, like, discipline her. So, like, if me and Lacey are eating, she's not allowed on the sofa with us. She has to stay stay down. She's whines and whines and whines. And Lacey's just like, Brandon, be strong. Don't give in. Oh, I was like, yeah. I, I can't. The sounds. <laughs> Like when when we got my, my dog, uh, I remember I was like, when we're eating, I'm never giving her food from the table. I'm never mm. gonna sit sit while I'm eating, give her something. Yeah, well, I guess now I've broken it, but I think I was I went strong for a good maybe two years. I was like, I'm not gonna give her something while I'm eating but now if i do it's only like i'll give it i'll throw her some cucumber and then she my dog can be a massive butter mouth and she just i throw it at her and then she just it just falls on the floor she doesn't know how to catch it with her mouth <laughs> yeah you do you have to be strong and discipline them i I'm, i say that and I'm not my dog's not the best well trained but I guess my dog has a lot of personality, but and well, I think that's why we like her. She, you know, she could be better betra- trained, but well, she's our dog, so this guy's still friendly. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to another brand new episode of Victory Achieved Podcast. I say brand new, unless you're listening to this again, and I've coughed, so I've already ruined this take, fuck it, let's keep going. <laughs> so, uh, we actually worked out that uh, when we recorded last, uh, we've actually been recording this show for two years, can you believe? So, I guess it's a happy two year anniversary to Dan Hello. and Brandon. Two years, if your time's up by seven, it's 14. So we're 14 in dog years now. Yeah. <laughs> Rele- relevant to the cold opening, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. Well, I'm feeling a little bit dog-eared, so... Um, <laughs> but, um, but, mm. you know, I, I can't think of anything better to say. I was guess I'm a bit long in the tooth. But... Anyway, uh, yeah, so... Uh, it's not feeling a bit rough. Let, let's just get on with it. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we'll start off with, uh, the, I suppose, the hot topic. The thing that's just come out, uh, okay. which Dan has been playing. Let's kick off with, uh, oh, I went to say Breath of the Wild, but it's not. No. Breath, of the Wild, Breath of the Wild 2, Tears of the Kingdom. Also, it's Zelda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know how many hours I've played. I could probably check now, but I'm just going to leave it. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've probably played. It's getting towards 10 hours. I don't know if I'm actually played 10 hours but i'm i would say i'm on the i'm definitely about seven eight nine ish i don't know it's around there uh so i played a fair amount uh i'm not very far well it's an open world game so yeah you can explore to your heart's content um i've got a few friends have been playing it as well so we've been messaging each other about what we've each of us have been doing because i know like one of my friends has got to one of the he's got to like the Rito place and i'm like i've not even i'm nowhere near there i'm just doing my own thing and he's like oh i did this this did these shrines i'm like all right i'm doing this uh i guess you know you know when well unless it was just me but you know when you played breath of the wild and elden ring what how did you feel playing those two games? Uh, Elden Ring, excited, full of adventure. Breath of the Wild, I just felt like I was going for the motions. I've, I've got to be brutally honest, I'm not a huge fan of Breath of the Wild. That's why I've not gone out my way to get Tears of the Kingdom. I much prefer the older 2D Zelda adventures. To, I, like, I know, I know you're more. you're like that, Chris. And uh, But going from what you meant said about Elden Ring, you said you were excited to see the world. And I, I had... I felt the exact same playing Elden Ring and Breath of the Wild. I, I remember when I got Breath of the Wild, I played it that that week because I got, got it for Christmas, and I think I played like 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 thirty forty hours like in a space of a week. It was ridiculous. I just wanted to see it so much, and I guess to put it brutally, Tears of the Kingdom is just more Breath of the Wild. It's, oh dear! Like I I, I say that that's. You say, oh dear, That's it's not really. It. I think I don't, because it's like the same world as Breath of the Wild, I kind of know what 
I'm expecting, you know, to a point. Whereas, like, Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, I had no idea. I was like, well, Elden Ring's from software. I know what gameplay-wise, what to expect and some other stuff. But I remember just getting to each area and I was like, oh my gosh, what's, what am I going to see next? What what am I going to find next? And it was the same in Breath of the Wild. And I'm still... I do... St- I do feel like that with Tears, but it's on a much less level than those two. Uh, Maybe I played many great open world games so that Tears just, you know, I might, I might, I might feel differently in a, in many hours later, but I, but I I say that as a, you know, I I put a a negative, but other than that, I am actually really enjoying Tears. I've I've been blasting through Octopath and Tears is like the only thing that's made me go, nope, no more Octopath now for a while. (laughs) And it's now Tears time. Uh, And like the, it it, it is really good. Um, I guess, I guess, where where do I start properly? Uh, It's definitely feels like it's trying to fix or correct some things that people didn't like about Breath of the Wild. For example, the story definitely feels far more engaging from the start. Although, literally before we re- start recording this, I saw a tweet that went, Great game, Nintendo. I literally just saw the final cutscene for this game in the space of 10 minutes after getting down on the ground. I was just like, yep, that could that can potentially happen. So, I've, I've yet to see that. But, yeah. Uh, other than that, story-wise, it definitely feels like it's trying to course-correct Breath of the Wild. Because I... Uh, hmm? So what 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 in gameplay terms does it do to distinguish itself from Breath of the Wild? What what new features does it have? So see so you know in Breath of the Wild you had like the bomb, ice, the like freeze time and mag- mag- magnetism. Magnetism, yeah. Yeah. So with this, I think there's still one I've yet to get. But you got the ultra hand, which is basically your magnet. But this time you can attach things. So there's a lot of puzzles where you're like, right, I need to attach this to this. Like I did a shrine last night where I had to attach. I had like a little, you had like a little uh, board with some wheels on. And there was another one. So I put them together. I had, you know, the little uh, yellow, not yellow, orange glowing balls. Uh, I put that. I needed to move that, so I put that, attached that on, and then it, it was on. I then had to move that onto like this barrier, and then I hit hit the wheels, and then it rolled across the barrier. So that's like a puzzle that I did it, and so that's one. You got something called recall, so you can rewind time on an object. Uh, I that's how you get to like all the sky islands. You got the the rocks that fall, like the rocks that fall down. You. Sk- Stand on them, use the recall, and then you fly up to the Sky Islands, uh, which I've not really explored that much. I've only done the tutorial Sky Island. Uh, and then, what's the other one? You got the the thing where you fuse all the, is where you got all the weapon fusing. So you, like you have any weapon, you can fuse it with any other weapon or any objects. And so you can make like a bomb arrow while just when you're using your arrows and you can make weapons where you can put like a bomb or something else on and you can if you got like a uh you can put or you can put a stone on make sledgehammers yeah there's a, a thing called a flame emitter so you basically make any weapon into a flamethrower which is kind of fun pretty cool mm. um I've, like i said i think there's another ability but i have not got it yet i guess it's try it's some of the abilities that you get in the first game are just gone. I think the only one is the ma- like the ultra hand, which is the magnetism, and then the stop time is now recall. But the, other than that, it's new abilities. Really, realistically, it's just a different tool set. But you can do quite a bit with that tool set. It's a lot more uh, creative. There's a lot of things where I, apparently there's a lot of shrines where there's multiple ways to complete it using the different tools but i i i I don't know which shrines are like that but uh like i did i i got stuck on a shrine last night actually and then while i was at work today i was like if i just did this would that do it and then i got home today i did i did what i thought and i was like oh there you go uh like i said i've not played loads but it definitely feels like it's trying to be different than breath of the wild and trying to make the 
make the story really more engaging and make the gameplay different and more creative than its predecessor. Let me see. Um, I do have one question. I don't know if you've played enough to know yet, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm aware like a lot of it like it takes place on like the Sky Islands, as you say. But the actual like world map itself, like the ground floor, like Hyrule, because mm-hmm. it's meant to be the same place. Is it the same map? Has it been reused? I don't you know. Uh, so far, no. I think it's a yes and no. I've with how much I've explored, which is not much. It is a yes and no. Some sections feel very similar but there is a lot of new things to find there's a lot of caves there's a lot of caves that you can uh go in and find and do that's a big thing there's a lot of there's a lot of underground sections through the map that obviously you got the sky set sky islands as well which are except for the the tutorial island which is basically your grand, great plateau uh i haven't done any of the sky stuff and then you also have an underground bit which i've done a bit on i did like the side quest to get the the camera but other than that i've not really done much uh so you got the sky the land and the underground but the land i think it is mostly i think it i think it is very it is very similar to breath of the wild i think uh, there are changes but I haven't explored it enough to say, but I have, I have explored enough of what I've explored. I've been like, oh, that's that that's different than Breath of the Wild, but it's all but it's still still very similar. Uh, it is a bit of a yes and no, yes and no. Mm. But I, it disappoints me. It is, yeah, because uh, I, I was thinking like obviously from what I've seen, it looks very similar to Breath of the Wild. It's like it's reused assets and that puts me off a bit because it's like is this going to feel more like an expansion than an actual sequel because i was thinking like uh like how majora's mask is to ocarina of time like they reuse a lot of the assets but it was only given like nine months to like bang out a new game Mm. and this game has been delayed for ages and i'm wondering what are the delays for exactly because it seems to be just mostly the same stuff again i i don't know like i'm not that far so i don't know but i can definitely feel like they've tried to change change make it feel and change feel different to breath of the wild because like breath of the wild in if you if you actually think of the story and its urgency basically speedrunners are right <laughs> because mm-hmm. why in with the urgency of breath of the wild why would you do anything else you would go <laughs> straight to hyrule castle and beat calamity ganon that is like the air urgency of breath of the wild into its story whereas tears of a kingdom is completely different i'm i've seen people go i see i've seen things where it's like someone's beaten tears of the kingdom in 94 minutes and I'm like, one, how? Two, how do you know where to fucking go? Because I don't know where the final boss is. I'm a, maybe, well, unless I'm being stupid and I, I, know, I do actually know, I, it is where I think it is, but I, I don't know. There's, it's not like in Breath of the Wild where it basically just, it basically, you start it and points you where basic Calamity Ganon is. There's n- none of that. It's very ambiguous on what kind of going on in Tears. Like, after, you have like little prologue section and then after, you do, you have your tutorial and then it's like, well just go here and then it just kind of expands out. So, unless someone, unless it's like, well, let's go here, oh right, here's the final boss, which I'm assuming probably is the case other than that i have no idea where the final boss is but i apparently you can get you can get to it right right now but i have no idea where it is so m- most of the uh, gameplay footage i have seen of this game like and i've seen very little because i don't want it spoiling for me because i will pick it up at some point all i know is like an hour like after it went live i've seen so many videos of people just crafting dicks that was yep. it it's like yep. it's like yeah you get you're going crafting of, of course that, that's all they're gonna do yep it could be given the most elaborate system ever that's it <laughs> yep i could literally do it if i wanted to it's really easy yep <laughs> Uh, and I think that's why so many people are giving it like tens out of tens. <laughs> but craft dicks, well, but yeah, it's the it's the peak of gaming. <laughs> yep, craft a dick in a a, a stick man with a dick in Zelda. There you go. Yeah, I've seen that video so many times. I, I, I don't look for it. It just it just keeps popping it, yeah, up. Yeah, it just appears. <laughs> Uh, no, I like. I am. I am really enjoying it. I like. I put it. I at the same time. I. I can't lie. It just is more Breath of the Wild, which isn't a bad thing either. I really like Breath of the Wild. It's still not like in my top three Zelda games, but you know, I. I do. I. 
you know, I've played over 100 hours of Breath of the Wild. <laughs> There's a, that's more than enough reason to say why I really like it. Although I say that, I've played more hours on Octopath Traveler, and I think Breath of the Wild is better than Octopath Traveler. So, so uh, there you go. But, uh, you know, I, I am enjoying Tears, and it does feel like it's trying to fix a lot of the criticisms Breath of the Wild has. The, I would yeah. say, the tutorial area, there I got, did get stuck, and I nearly fucked myself. I, I got there. There's a bit where you have to go up to the snowy area, and... I got up there, and then I, I, I kind of got a little bit lost. And there's a little, like, cliff that you can go up. And so I was like, oh, if I could go up this cliff, there must be a similar thing on the other cliff where the shrine is. Couldn't find one. I then fell down. Here is where I made my mistake. Uh, I should not have felt fallen down. I then fell down to the next level, and then thinking the path up to the shrine was there, I then proceeded for an hour, try and get back to where I was going up to this snowy area, failing, and then I realized I have to go across the entire uh, tutorial map again to get to where I was. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Mm. And then I went, and then I was like, what if I have a save? And I was very lucky that my last manual save was in the cave just before the snowy area. So I, mm. I nearly spent an over an hour and a half going backtracking through the tutorial uh, island, but luckily I didn't have to. So every other person who I knew who started, started the game after me, I was like, when you get to here, do this. When you get to here, do this. So that they so that they knew which way to go and they didn't nearly make the same mistake I did. Or maybe I'm just stupid. I don't know. Well, it sounds like you managed to avoid many tears of the in that game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, mm. I got I I cause I know I put in our chat that I played it until half two. I got so pissed off because of this. Cause it got to about <laughs> one when I one o'clock when I realised this that I'd gone the wrong way and I was like I was like I'll go, I I need to go bed. And I sat, I, I was like five minutes and I was like, I'm so pissed off. I want to fix <laughs> this. And so I, I went straight back on and <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, voice acting's been pretty, except, well, except for Zelda is Zelda. Every other voice actor so far has been decent. You got the, the mighty Matt Mercer as Ganondorf. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Whereas Matt Mercer, you can't. When Matt Mercer is a voice, you cannot go. He cannot go wrong. Yeah, there's another voice I recognise mainly because they play a Fire Emblem character, and I was like, oh, of course. Oh, yeah, I was like, recognise that voice. To be fair, I'm the same when it comes to anime. Like I, certain voices, as soon as I hear him, I'm just like, this just made this anime 100 percent better it, just because that voice actor exists. It's the well, it's because we listen to it and we watch it in Japanese. It's, it, it's even better. It's like, oh, I know, recognise that voice actress yes. or that voice actor. You know, recognise their Japanese voice. But yeah, um, I'm I'm really liking Tears, but I'm not very far. Yeah, it's a good game, but it is just more Breath of the Wild with a lot more creative tools given to the player. And dicks. Yeah, and dicks. <laughs> dicks of the kingdom. <laughs> so, this raises uh, an interesting point that I've, I've seen someone made. Was like, was like, like, Tears of the Kingdom got like a 10 out of 10 because it says, like, oh, it does like everything Breath of the Wild did, but better. Breath of the Wild has also got like 10 out of 10. So you think, hold on, in hindsight, that means Breath of the Wild can't be a 10 out of 10 because Tears of the Kingdom is. And if you say... Is the game is better than Breath of the Wild. Something's got to give. Uh, it's the same with everything, though. Mm. You know, when like Pokemon Red and Blue came out, the ten out of tens. If you look at them now, uh. they're not ten out of tens. But you know, <laughs> that's just the way it is. I know both of you are just like, fuck. Why did you just say that, Dan? But you know what I mean. Like at that time, yeah, Breath of the Wild probably was a ten out of ten for a lot of people. I, I listen to podcasts where someone's been like, I could give my 50 year old dad Breath of the Wild and they really enjoyed it. They had a great time. But Tears of the Kingdom, I don't know if I could give the, give my 50 year old dad that and, and he'd have the same enjoyment as he did with Breath of the Wild. You know, I don't know. Yeah. That's a really interesting way of putting it, saying like you can give it to your 50 year old dad. Yeah. Here you go, Dad. You can craft dicks in this. You'll love it. <laughs> My dad would just look at it and be like, what the bloody hell am I to do? And quite often, if I'm playing like anything like made by the Japanese, he'd be like, is this Yu-Gi-Oh? And I was like, Dad, first of all, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. And second, <laughs> no. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh, what is it? Digimons? Then I'm like, no. <laughs> no, I, I, 
yeah, like I said, I, I am enjoying it. I need to play a lot more. It it definitely feels like I, I think I'm. I think with the way I'm going, I think I'll probably. I think I'm going to enjoy it more than Tears of a Kingdom. I think. I mean, I mean, I'm going to enjoy it more than Breath of the Wild, sorry. I think because it's the same world as Breath of the Wild, I'm not getting the same uh, feelings of like I did with Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring, where I'm like, oh, what am I going to see? What am I going to see next? It's like, well, I know, I know this world. I've, I've been around it so for over 100 hours. I know generally what to expect. So it's just discovering all the new things, and that's making me more interested. It's not really the actual world that's making me interested. I, I, I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, New Zelda. Okay. Um, so, I don't know, have you got anything quickly to add to that? Because otherwise I'm going to talk about probably the only thing I've been up to in the past two weeks since becoming a father. <laughs> Go on. No? Okay. In which case, so, I've started, well, obviously not on purpose, I went to a baby shower. Again, I've been busy. I've not been doing, like, electronics stuff. I've been sort of life busy. I went to a baby shower last week, and I've never been to a baby shower before, so I didn't even know really what to expect. I know it's quite it's most often it's like an american thing isn't it like baby showers yeah. and stuff like that i've only been to one yeah, so my first instinct was what the fuck do you do at a baby shower like what does it mean and it basically means to shower the baby no, not shower the baby see i've already started again to shower the mother and father with presents to look after yeah. the baby when they're born okay when i first heard baby shower i was just like well the baby's not born what's the point in washing it <laughs> so i was a bit i was a bit i was a bit confused there at why it's a big event to, on how to wash the baby i was like to, yeah so we went to the baby shower and you know, that was, obviously that was a whole day affair. But when, when we finished the baby shower and got home, well, got back to Lacey's parents, we started watching a um, TV program called Under the Dome, which came out in 2013, I believe. Was it wasn't 2013, it must have been about then. And it's a Stephen King series. Um, so it's based on the books he's wrote and written. And the first thing that came to my mind was... Also, I know Stephen King wrote a lot of his books during like the 80s and whatever. So the first thing that came to my mind was what came first, the Simpsons movie or Under the Dome? Because they're pretty much the same thing. Um, so obviously Simpsons came first, as Spanky would know, so they predicted everything. So essentially, it's, you know, there's this town in America and also the massive dome appears. Um, as, the, as soon as the dome immediately appears, it just basically rips whatever it's in in half so like say for example if there's a cow crossing the road and when the dome appeared the dome would just literally just cut this cow in half or buildings were cut in half people who were probably walking with their loved ones holding their hands they would have their arms broken by the time that like, this wall appeared they don't uh, so i'm only about three episodes in and you know no one really knows how tall the dome is the government seems to be doing tests on the wall they're not unsure they're a bit unsure about what it is and the only two people at the moment who have any idea what's going on is like the mayor and the councillor or whatever it is or the preacher so it's, I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes i'm enjoying it so far obviously a lot of stephen king stories is obviously they've got the overarching story but there's a lot of side stories within the overarching story so that's that nice stephen king-esque to it you know um, like i said so far i'm enjoying it i'm three episodes in it's 39 episodes long it's quite a bit of a beast to get through with each episode being an hour long um yeah so so far i'm enjoying it. have you guys heard of it or anything i, I know of it i've not read the book or watched but I know of it. Yeah, I'll just look it up now because I didn't know anything about it. And it's funny you should say like Simpsons did it because um, it turns out this book was only written in 2009 and the Simpsons movie came out in 2007. So they that's, did that's literally first. why I was thinking at the time what came first, the Simpsons or King. And now we know Simpsons and did yeah, it. Yeah, so the Simpsons literally predicted what Stephen King was doing. It's confirmed. Because mm. I would have thought it would have been a bit, it, <laughs> a bit freaky if... Well, actually, no, not freaky per se, but if King did it first and then The Simpsons, then obviously King, because hey, that was my idea. But the fact that Simpsons <laughs> did it first, and, and obviously they've got notoriously memed for predicting things. Yeah, so it, it just seemed a bit weird because I was thinking, like, all, like you said, like, oh, Stephen King, most of his work is like in the 80s. Like, that's when he's like most predominant. Mm. So you assume like all these books are from then, and you kind of forget it's like, oh, yeah, he's still writing. He's like, yeah, cause, literally, because <laughs> I was thinking, like, obviously, It and The Shining, you know, all of those cult classes were all during the 80s and suddenly obviously yeah. he's got some recent-ish ones but obviously yeah. i didn't really think of under the dome being within the past 15 years or 14 years technically yeah and then you got something like carrie that's had like two versions is it two or three versions i don't know i've not read carrie yet yeah and, well i think that's got like either one or two remakes so i don't know bloody hell 
at least well, most, one well, remake. Most of Stephen King's older works are just like metaphors for like, him being on drugs. <laughs> a lot of drugs. <laughs> I've only yeah. read... Have you have any of you ever read any Stephen King? I've read actually quite a, when I was commuting from Peterborough to get to work. Um, I would spend like a lot of my time reading, so I've read. So I can literally list every Stephen King book I've read. I've read It, The Shining. I think I've read Doctor Sleep, The Institute, The Outsider, Cujo, Pet Cemetery. And I think that's it. So yeah, so I've read seven of his books. Chris, oh, uh, I actually haven't read a single one of his books. Uh, I have seen a couple of the TV miniseries, much to my dismay, because they've all been crap. <laughs> I've not um, seen any of the TV miniseries. I've only seen I've, I've seen like Tim Curry's It, which I didn't realize was actually filmed in two parts. That yeah. finding part one is easy, but trying to find part two for some reason seems to be so difficult, and I don't know why. I've checked so many like secondhand shops to try and find it, like CEX charity shops or anything. I just cannot find the second part to the Tim Curry It. Whoa. Well, to save you the time, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people have, like find it really beloved and they prefer that version over the, the modern pennywise i'm just I like really i find it really drawn out and boring like most of the like adaptations of it so, sorry mr king like uh the, the best one is like movies like, yeah, 2019 high, high voltage yeah. high voltage was the best one i've i've read one stephen king book and funny enough it's one that you didn't you've not read brandon which is quite nice to be different it's the gunslinger which is the first book in his what he would call his magnus opus <laughs> the the dark tower series i've been so, meaning to do the dark tower series yeah, i've got the first i think i've got about nearly half of it I've, re- I've read the first one and i've read half of the second one and then i stopped not because it's bad it's really quite a good book uh i just stopped although I've heard things that basically it's a the second book is just filler. I was a bit like, mm. it's not. I, oh I, god. So, uh, but it, I I guess uh, with how far I've gone, it doesn't feel like filler. But I think I can understand why that comment would be made because it's basically just how certain these characters come into it, and it's basically just doing these three characters. Like it's set into the second book. It's just these three characters. It's their backstory. That's in in a in a nutshell. That is the second book. Uh, mm. Without without because it is a lot more than that, and that's why it's quite interesting. With what what actually happens in the second book so far, it's uh, quite quite in, quite weird and quite interesting. But the first book, the gunsling, is fantastic. And I think I, I when I read it, I was like, I am never watching that Dark Tower film. Why? <laughs> Mainly because uh, after reading the book and then I watched the trailer, or like this is like after the film had been out for, uh, for ages, I was like, I'm just gonna watch the trailer and see how much it's butchered this book. I didn't. I don't think I got very far. I must have got like ten seconds. And I was like, Oh my gosh, this 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 trailer. What did they do to this film? This film is terrible. Like <laughs> I don't even need to watch it to be like how much it's been butchered it's like the little boy it's just like oh let's go gunslinger let's go to new york or whatever and i'm like what wait what this is this is not this is not the first book what is going on here what what i was like no i know i'm 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 never watching that film does it i think the one my one problem is every time i read uh the dark tower i just think of iris elba that's the only problem i just think of him as the gunslinger and i'm just like no that's not the gunslinger that's just iris elba I need to, and then i try and imagine the gunslinger i'm like right let's try and think of him i think of him more a bit like clint eastwood not iris elba <laughs> yeah the one stephen king book i had so the book i had the easiest time reading was the institute i found that one very vivid and a very quick and easy read the one which i struggled with the most in terms of just sheer content pacing and everything was the outsider i really struggled reading that because it was just so it was more of a it was more like a crime one and a lot a lot of it was just law political and just things like that and i was just like i was like fuck is anything gonna happen whereas on the institute it was just like bang 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 like it was quite in there very descriptive very vivid you know it was kind of nice because it was just like this very just long overarching story of pennywise um Cujo was pretty good and vivid pet cemetery was all right actually the pet cemetery was good but i don't remember much of um oh, i can't remember now i can't remember much of doctor sleep and i don't know why i'm, I'm pretty certain yeah i just like of, of the seven books i've read doctor sleep is the one i can't really remember anything of and i don't know why doctor sleep's the sequel to the shining isn't it yeah 
I don't know why I can't remember. I don't know why I can't remember. It's weird. Uh, for me, the most interesting stuff I've read by Stephen King recently is uh, him on Twitter just, like arguing with Elon Musk. Really? <laughs> yeah. What's he been saying? Oh, all sorts. I, I, I've not kept like a huge like track of what he's been saying, but it was mostly to do with like you know like the blue check mark things. Yeah. Like, oh, hanging yeah. out. It's like all oh, people meant to pay for them. It's like Stephen King had one, and was like, "What the fuck have I got a blue check mark? I don't want one. I look like a right pod this twat." <laughs> <laughs> so why are you giving me one? You know, piss off. Yeah, God, he might. Imagine having to pay for Twitter to like, build some kind of self fulfillment. Yeah, yeah it's you pay a... For a free platform. Nah, no, no. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Not good. Yeah, no, no, it's not good. I, I think they're kind of like trying to sweep it under the rug at the moment. <laughs> And they've got a new CEO, so God knows what's going to happen. Yeah. I hate cool. Twitter, but sometimes the drama's entertaining. <laughs> I, I just, yeah, I use it, well, I initially used it for another reason, and now it's, I'm now using it for near enough the same reason I use most of my social media. So, uh... Of yeah. course. Yeah, you you already know, Brandon. So, uh, yes. Uh, just talking people. Yeah. Don't blame you. <laughs> uh, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of good artwork on there, isn't there? Y- yes. Yes. <laughs> mm. Um... I, yeah, so Under the Dome, good. Yeah, like I said, I'm only three episodes into it. I don't really understand or know how that's going to stretch out into 39 episodes. Um, So that's going to be something I'm yet to see. So, yeah, as I watch more, I'll see if I can form a more solid opinion of what happens. Oh, well, Marvelous. you watched uh, a film that I watched, uh, I mentioned a while back, didn't you, Chris? Yes, the I did. D and D movie. I did. I was going to mention something else, but we'll we'll move on to that <laughs> shortly. Yeah. Um. So I have watched the Dungeons and Dragons movie. I've actually watched it twice, as um, I folks wanted to watch it. So, uh, and it was actually their wedding anniversary. So I thought, well. They're not really doing much, so let's watch Dungeons and Dragons. So they did, and they well, I've enjoyed it too. Now, re- refresh my memory, Dan. How? What did you think about this film? You said it was pretty good, right? What were your thoughts? Uh, I said I enjoyed. I I thought it was like a, it was a fun film. I I think I didn't have. It was just one of those films that I went in, really enjoyed it, really enjoyed the experience. Kind of left and kind of like didn't have. I don't really have loads to say. Just that it was a good film. Like I did. I think I did say that some of the uh, like definitely like the um, like the Dragonborns and those kind of humanoid did look a bit weird, but for the most part, I, I enjoyed the film. I really liked the Druid, who I found out is the she played the female character in the It Part One. Go ahead, link in it to Stephen King. Yeah, whatever she's called in It. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, um, yeah. Well, say so I I really like this film, so I decided to watch it again. It was like. It was like two days later, so it wasn't like a great mm. deal of time has passed. I've had a really fun time of it. I'm not like a huge like D and D buff, like uh, like no audience and outs in it, but I did get a very few references from like uh, some of the old games. It's like oh, the, the mention mm. Baldur's Gate. It's like, I know what Baldur's Gate is. I know yes. Neverwinter, it, and I think I've felt just like that little bit more invested because it's like the world building they've done is like I know these locales. Yes. I sort of know where they are. Mm. That, that gives it a bit more weight. But I liked all the characters. I think they played off each other really well. The f- film did something that sh- not a lot of films do. But, uh, I actually gave a shit about all the characters. <laughs> like the a- actual party as such. Mm. And the diverse of it. it. They kind of remind me, like the, the little party, they kind of remind me of Gardens of the Galaxy in a sense. Like they seem to have yeah. the same sort of, Yeah, yeah, they, they do actually. Same sort of chemistry, like how they play each other. Like like obviously your barbarians, like your group Drax equivalent and so on. <laughs> yeah, but I this this film I found it was funny. I thought the plot was good. It might be a little cliche, but it was very entertaining. Um all the set pieces had enough like excuses for, you know, to like get in as many sort of like mythical creatures and action set pieces as possible yeah it's like, what's it, like two and a quarter hours and flew by both times I watched it even on a rewatch it's like yeah like this bit's coming up and I was, I was like because I've watched it once only a couple of days earlier and I was what I was like I had like one eye on my folks you know how you do with a movie you've got like one eye on your friend that's watching it just to see mm. how they react to it <laughs> it's like saying oh this bit's coming coming up the uh the graveyard scene I find no, yeah. hilarious. That yes. bit's fantastic. I was, like, I was like, yeah, they're laughing as well. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's it's really yeah, it's just really solid. I might actually pick this one up on Blu-ray. Like, mm. I don't know if they'll do a sequel to it because I don't know how well it's performed. I think it did relatively well. I think so. Yeah. Uh, the general consensus, I think, is like sevens out of tens, like seventy percent 
yeah. would sell them Rotten Tomatoes, so people seem to like it fine enough. But I don't know if they'll ever do a sequel to it. I think it's like a one and done. It's like everyone's had their arc. It's like, well, so it feels. But you know what Hollywood's like. Mm. You might do in the war. But I kind of hope they don't. I think it's wrapped up fine. Unless they take like an entirely different cast and tell a different story, which you imagine will be have to be how it goes. But Let's yeah, uh, Hugh Grant plays a good role. Uh, everyone there does great in it. Mm. It's just highly entertaining and I highly recommend it. Yeah. As I said when when I mentioned it, because I play my my own personal D and D character is a druid. I I definitely really enjoyed uh, Doric the the druid. Mm. I'd seen um someone on YouTube who uh, does a lot of D and D. Is it Bryce Hayes? Don't know if you're familiar with him. No. He was um he'd be talking about uh Dungeons and Dragons online game, and he briefly mentions the film as well. And he's like, it's like sometimes you just gotta let things slide. It's like, yeah, the stuff that's happening in the film isn't like one to one with a tabletop game, but you've got to sacrifice some accuracy for entertainment's sake. It's oh, like, yeah. yeah, you could you could do it like that, but it would be boring to watch. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, I know about how people can get like really hung up on these. It's like, oh, you can't do that. You can't cast that spell. He's the wrong class. <laughs> when I was watching, it's like, shut the hell up. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, when they were doing the speak with the dead. They just kept constantly kept using it. So in like actual D and D, you wouldn't be able to. Oh, they can do it once a day. Or something. <laughs> well, there'd be a limit limitation, but it was just like I don't know how many how they used it way more than you could actually do in 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 the game. Uh, so in a tabletop game so but it doesn't it doesn't matter it's like a really it's a funny scene so it who cares uh, yeah yeah it, it's just a good film let's go and see it it's good mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's, that's with you no I, I didn't say it's fine i, I made sure to say it's not it's fine <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. No, it's better it, than fine. it is good it is good yeah, it's good so i suppose just moving swiftly on uh, I'm going to bring it back to a game which I played and I tried very hard today to uh, get it done before we recorded and I managed to do it. So um, uh, one of my wonderful uh, viewers on Twitch sent me some games, which is amazing. They sent me Callisto Protocol and Dead Space. Callisto Protocol I've not had much time with yet, so I, I will talk about that at some point. Uh, but I have finished a Dead Space remake. Have either of you played them or the original? No, nope, I don't want any. to. Okay. Well, I would say... I, I'm, I'm glad I got this gifted to me because I don't know how much I would have paid for it. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed this game uh, as far as remakes go, but it does tread a lot of old ground. Like, um, oh, it's kind of a strange remake because, like, the, the sort of gameplay and, like, the map design isn't far off from the original. It's just, like, been tweaked and polished a bit. Some room layouts are different, but, like, the, the core map is, like, the same, if that makes sense. Like, you still, like, access things, like, the same way. It's just, like, the room designs are slightly different. But compared to the original, they're like, oh, yeah, well, I know where I am. I know, like, the equivalent. Because, like, like, in the original games, there's some iconic rooms. I'd also point out uh, now that I've played the original Dead Space to death. I've played it so much. I've uh, done challenge runs on it. I've played it so many times since it first came out and it's one of my favorite games so the remake had a lot to live up to i'm glad to say it does my only issue with it is i think it plays it a little, a little bit too similar even going in as like new sort of ahead of time what i had to face but it does flash it out the game a bit more it feels longer uh, it does add like a few side quests in and uh the map itself is more interconnected if you played the first game you know there's a tram system and it kind of like acts as like a checkpoint between chapters it's like you do this floor you're on like chapter four so on you in engineering and so on and so on it's it's a fairly linear game but this one opens it up a little bit more because you can backtrack you can go back to the tram and like go to any floor at any time which is what you do to like do some side quests and the game also adds a security sort of feature so in the original game there were like certain lockers that you couldn't open until like uh you come back later and they're just sort of like magically open when you're backtracking and this one it gives you a reason for it and that's because like your security level is not high enough and as you go on you find like security officers and that and like you can get into like higher access stuff which is kind of where the backtracking comes in it's like oh you've got like level three clearance now so now you can open up all these lockers so it kind of goes out of its way to explain i suppose for lack of a better term like game mechanics rather than story it's like it gives you like a reason why these things are happening rather than just for gameplay sake but i don't like how they fleshed it out um the upgrade system is done slightly differently as well in the original you got like power nodes 
and then you took them to like a bench and there's like a sort of essentially a skill tree you just put a node in it and it'll upgrade your stuff that's still the case but for everything like weapons their skill trees only go out so far and then you've got to find like special items to upgrade them further to unlock like more nodes and then usually type behind all the side quests and exploring so if you like really like one gun then uh you're gonna have to go out your way and explore and do the optional stuff to get it to like maxed out as the original light you could just upgrade everything from the start <coughs> Sorry, my hair fever's being a dick. <laughs> would, would, you, would you say? Because I've, I've never played Dead Space, but all I, I, if you, if I had to say what it's like, is it basically just Resi Four in space? Uh, it's not too dissimilar. Yeah, um, that's, that's what I thought. No, that's, a, that's not a bad thing. I'm just like that's what I thought. It kind of plays because it's over the shoulder, ain't it? It is, yeah. Um, Dead Space did do the um, over the shoulder, but you can move around first. Whereas like Resi Four, like the originals, like, you don't move when you aim. So uh, the original Dead Space feels a bit more clunky. Like this one feels like you got way more fluid movement, and the yeah, optional extras you've got, like you got kinesis, which can like you can pick up items and hit enemies with them, uh, impale them, which was there in the original, but it was fleshed out more in Dead Space Two. But in this remake, it feels more like two, where there's just more stuff you can pick up, and things seem to do more damage as well. Like. You could throw things at enemies in like the original ones, but it didn't seem to like do anything. They didn't react. Here they actually like do damage. So if you're running really low on ammo, you can like impale them with spears and whatnot. Like any sort of debris lying around. And you've also got stasis, which can slow down time, uh, which pretty much acts exactly the same as the original game. Like that's not really been, been tinkered with. If it works, leave it alone. But without the rose tinted glasses, I think I can safely say if you've not played the original, I don't think you have to. I think this yeah. one you can just pick up and there's no reason to go back because for the most part it is the same. There's a few little tweaks, like I say, some of the room layouts are different, but the mechanics are smoother. Um, the changes it does make, like the minor ones, I do think are for the better. Like some sections, like in the original, like you've got a couple of bits where you're like on like a uh, sort of mounted turret, and they're not exactly the most fun sections, so they've been scrapped and reworked entirely, and I do think for the better. Although my one minor nitpick is uh, in its place, you like you you don't like take a seat like you would do in a turret section like your traditional games or like the original. Instead, you sort of like interact with a turret and it like moves with you, and you sort of aim like you're aiming your regular weapon. Except there's like another sort of cursor that moves along, like uh, which is like the, the turret being used. The my one little nitpick is. To fire the turret, you press the X button, which is fine. But because you've been firing with your gun, you can still press like the R2 trigger and it still fires off your rounds. Like you're still firing like your gun. And it's your, your brain doesn't quite click to that. It's like, I thought, thought I was like firing the turret. I hadn't. I've like just completely emptied my gun. It's like, oh. Oh, I thought I was firing the turret. I'm not. <laughs> That's why I'm not winning. <laughs> like, shit. I think if it should have done it so you, you wouldn't be firing your regular gun. You should be just firing the turret at that point. Um, Yeah. Especially when you've been playing it on hard mode like I was. was I was running dry on ammo anyway. It was like, oh, I've just entire, emptied my entire clip into deep space. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Try that again. So soft reload, and then yeah, we're good. Um, other than that, the uh, there's a few bits where um, they have like lines of dialogue, and like you can't move on to the next room until the dialogue's finished, like like voice recordings, which the original had, but there's there seems to be more in this one. And there's a, a couple of points where I was like, is this going on for a bit? Can can we skip this? God, I just want to go through the sodding door. Should, should it? <laughs> and they do give Isaac a voice in this one. Isaac in the original was like a mute character, just like yeah, Gordon Freeman. That. But um. Um, honestly, his dialogue's there. <laughs> it doesn't really add a lot. I, I think it's like a choice, though, to do that. Like, because you don't want to like flesh him out too much. And the original story is still there. He's like, but what, what can you really add to a character that never really spoke in the original? Like, they give him a couple of lines that like suggest like his mum was like a cultist and get a little bit of backstory, but none of it really feels warranted. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I think he could have just still kept him mutant. It would have been fine. <laughs> but I know it's. It's not realistic, is it? It's like people are going to talk in a situation like this. There's like necromorphs running around, and you're like in the scene of aliens. You might utter a few more words, <laughs> but all in all, really enjoyed it. Uh, and I am going to go for the platinum trophy on it, just like you <laughs> did the original. <laughs> so uh, uh, there's some like new game plus options. There's like an impossible mode where you've got like one life to do it in. Um, oh, which is one very minor point. In the original game, there's a couple of bits where you can like instantly get killed if you're not careful. Um, this game tones it down a bit with like how the design is. It's like it's they're they're not like 100% gone, but there's slightly less instant death bullshit. 
Yeah. Like but yeah, highly recommended. Um, it, again, if you're like me and you've played the original to death, probably hold off and wait for a sale. But if it's your first time playing the franchise, go nuts. Seriously, you'll have a blast. Mm. Yeah, I do. I do want to check it out. I've been Dead Space. Has been Death Space One and Two. Definitely been two games on my to buy and to pl- playlist for a long time. Well, uh, say the, the the remakes well worth it. Mm. Oh, it just it does one oh, one one last note because you might get caught out if you played the original. In the original, when you're running around from place to place and backtracking, for the most part, you're fine. This game, because you like have to backtrack a bit more, um, you essentially get random encounters. Like you can go through like the same hallway of thousand times and then what a thousand and one time uh enemies will spawn in and they're random okay. <laughs> like what will happen or just other things will happen like vents will just like burst for like no reason <laughs> and you think oh i'm gonna get an encounter but you don't but oh, that caught me out <laughs> once or twice it's like oh i'll have a quick look at my map it's like oh my face appears to be being eaten that's not good <laughs> <laughs> i finally watched star wars rebels uh as you know i'm going through the entirety of star wars um i actually i've actually uh messed up my watch order funny enough i while watching rebels i realize andor season one occurs at the same time of season one of rebels but i didn't know until watching rebels so oh well uh it's oh, one well. one thing i've messed up one thing i'm sure i can live with that uh when i started as i, I told you to but when i started doing watching all the star wars in chronological order the main reason was to watch the clone wars animated series and Re- uh, Rebels, the animated series, and I'll be honest, I absolutely love Rebels so much. It's different to Clone Wars, for example, but both of them are like the brain, the like the child of uh, animated child of Dave Filoni, who's now well, the driving force of Star Wars these days, with like the Mandalorian and the upcoming Ahsoka series, which I'm going to be honest, I think if you've not watched Clone Wars, the animated series. And Rebels, the animated series, you should not watch Ahsoka. Ooh. I was wondering that because, because I am. <laughs> what literally every main character and the main villain are all from Re- most mostly Rebels, but then you but Ahsoka, unless you watch Clone Wars, you have no idea. Well, I guess you you will you will know who she is, but not really. You won't understand how, where how she gets to where she is. Like, I think Ahsoka, the upcoming Ahsoka series, is a testament on of how important the animated series for Star- both the two animated, the big two animated series are for Star Wars. Uh, I, I really like, really enjoyed Rebels. It, it, I guess it has what I have kind of wanted from like the original trilogy era of Star Wars, just the rebellion. It's just got a whole lot of rebellion stuff, a um, whole lot of like smaller characters from the original trilogy so like the biggest character that appears is Lando Carizian and he's hardly in it um he's in like two episodes you got like Mon Mothra is is a big is like quite in it towards the end you got um Senator Organa Leia, Leia's adoptive father he appears towards the end but the five no the six main characters are all really good and all very diverse and varied uh yeah it well it's like only four seasons and it feels very complete um yeah it's 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 just it's really good um i i don't really have any any gripes i i'm like debating whether i like it more than the clone wars animated series and i think everyone i speak to who loves the clone wars goes no you're wrong, and I'm like, I don't know, because I f- I really like the Clone Wars series, but I think it has more teething of issues than Rebels. I think Rebels, you maybe have a season, and then it just goes whole ham. Literally, season two, it brings Ahsoka in, it brings Darth Vader in. Season three and four bring in one of the greatest Star Wars villains, who is being pl- uh, the guy who voices him is playing him in the Ahsoka, and because it brings in. A Grand Admiral Thrawn, and he is incredible. Uh, I cannot wait to see him in uh, the Ahsoka series. Literally up there as one of the best Star Wars villains. I cannot tell you how good he is uh, as a villain. Yeah, it's it's just great. I I I like even if you don't want to watch Clone Wars animated series, I recommend watching Rebels for Ahsoka because like near enough, all the main characters from Ahsoka, uh, not from sorry, from Rebels are probably going to appear in Ahsoka. 
Uh, one of the characters appears in The Mandalorian Season 3 as well. Uh, the uh, uh, Zeb Aurelius, he appears in Mandalorian Season 3. So, yeah, there's a, there's a it, it's really good. It has a lot of, it goes into a lot of backstory on Rebellion prior to the original trilogy. It has, like, Yavin 4, which is where they are in Rogue One and at the end of A New Hope. Uh, it's connected to Rogue One as well. There's a lot of, if you rewatch, when I rewatch Rogue One, there's a lot of Star Wars Rebels Easter eggs. A lot, like. Uh, the actual ship, the, the main ship in Rebels, is flying in the space battle in Rogue One at the end. It's got a, quite, a, it's only small, but there's quite a lot of scenes of it just flying about. So, uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed Rebels. It's got a great cast of characters, great overall overarching plot for the four seasons. It's got Grand Admiral Thrawn, one of the best Star Wars villains. Yeah, it's it's great. Uh, I, don't, I I don't I think there's just a there's a there's throwaway episodes, and I think that's probably all I'd say. Other than that, I I don't really have any negatives. It's it's really good. Mm. But uh, I guess on to another sci-fi thing. Um, Chris, we both watched the latest Marvel film. <gasps> we did. We did. We watched Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, and I tell you what, I've already bought the soundtrack. Because we've got one or two. <laughs> I seen on the shop shelf the day after. I was like, "Yeah, I've got to get that." I, I think not so much for the music. Just, this sort of fact, we've got it. <laughs> the soundtrack's great. Although I, I think it's probably. I don't think it's as good as the other two, but it is still really good. Like I, I think compared to the other two. I was like, oh, it's this song, this song, this song, this song, this song, this song. Yeah, it's good. I was pretty much singing along to the beginning of this. <laughs> I was trying, trying to stifle myself. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess, what What do you think? What, what, how do you feel about Volume 3? Finally, the end of the Guardians of the Galaxy trilogy is finally here. Uh, let's see. Um, how do I start? Well, let's just say, like, the at the minute, like, uh, online, people are praising this movie. They, they think it's really, really good. They think it's like, now this is coming, this is the best Marvel trilogy that's been. No, it's um, not. It's not the best Marvel trilogy, but it's still a, it's a good film. Volume 3 is a good film. Mm. Oh, I really, really enjoyed it. I do like how they, like, uh, sort of change focus because essentially Rocket's the main character in this yeah. one, not Star Lord. And it's more about him and his backstory. Obviously, to catch it up to modern day, bring all the Guardians together. They go on a wacky adventure. Many all go home and have lemonade. <laughs> Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this movie. Um, I will have to rewatch it to see how I uh, I replace it. But I'm a big fan of the first and second one. And this is certainly on par with, if not, maybe better than the second one. Again, I'll need to rewatch it to uh, pick up on all the details. But I really like this. Everyone did great. Um, it was weird seeing Nathan Fillion in it as well. He, he plays a character in it. <laughs> he's well, he, up. He's in all I three. Think... He's in all three Guardian films. Yeah, but it's like fleshed out a bit more. Yeah, at least this time you actually saw him in the, <laughs> his face because the other two times he don't. No, you don't. No. Um, yeah, no. I think uh, James Gunn's been firing on all cylinders. It's like you can tell, everyone in this film is having a good time. Mm. Yeah, because if you don't know, like there was a controversy a while back, and this got pushed back because um, James Gunn temporarily got uh, fired by Disney for old tweets. But then, like pretty much the entire cast of Guardians was like, "We're bringing back. We ain't doing it otherwise." So uh, they did. <laughs> Long story short, that's the short version. Um, <laughs> and yeah, um, they, they, they feel like family. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, yeah. Everyone bounces off each other great. Everyone's got the fantastic chemistry. It was just a really good time. Um, I do think the villain was quite strong. Um, it was just a complete bastard. <laughs> and you like, like when you first like really see him, he's like, yeah, I want to see this guy get his comeuppance. I, I don't like him very much. Um, yeah, it's is it the longest Guardians one because it's like two and a half hours. Um, again, just yeah. flew by that. Yeah. How how it ended as well. Um, although I must point out, I didn't actually see the uh the post credit scene. I had to dash because uh. Which one? The final watch one. Yeah. Or both of them. Uh, the either, I, but when the credits started rolling, I looked at my watch and was like, that, I need to go. I'm, um, I'm going to miss my ride if I don't go now. So. The, the and final. Then was like 15 minutes late, so I could have easily seen. Yeah, the final one is just Star Lord will re- Basically, it just at, at the end of the day, it just says Star Lord will, re- will return. That's it. There, well, there, I'm not going to give you the context of of it, but it ends with the legendary Star Lord will return. Uh, the mid credit scene is quite 
quite good. It's quite funny. Uh, yeah. Yeah, good, good. But yeah. This, um, yeah, there um, won't be any more Guardian films. The, the Guardians yeah, well, will David still... David already said that he's the swan song. Hmm? Yeah, the, the Guardians will still appear, I, I assume, because they can, but I there won't be... I doubt there'll be any... There, there's no more film, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I actually... When I saw this film, uh, we in Britain were having... It was the coronation. Our king was getting cor- was getting his crown, and I was like, "I'm going to watch Guardians instead." So I did. Yeah, I thought I was. Oh, I'm going to do a seven hour chubby like mammoth. I was playing Pokemon <laughs> Stadium. Yeah, so we we're all busy not watching the coronation. Yep, pretty much. Uh, uh and uh, I had a good time. Uh, I, I, I know you. I'm. I'll be honest. I'm not a big fan of second. Guardian film. The more I watch it, the the less I like it. But the first Guardian film is one of my favorite Marvel films. Mm. Uh, so I think it's like it's either in my top three or top. It's definitely in my top five. It might be in my top three. That's how much I love the first Guardians film. Uh, and I I still think it's the first is better than this, the third. But the third is really good. I I, I it, it restored faith. I think the second film did things that. I didn't think were right uh and this third film felt it felt like it recaptured what i liked about the first film and uh it was great uh as you said it's all about rocket rocket is the main character um i cried i actually cried watching this film uh there was a few moments that that got me i'll be honest Mm. they got me especially the moment where even the moment right near the end where rocket has all the raccoons that got me even that got me Oh. Um, I I cried as well. I, I, I cried with joy because my mate paid for the ticket, so I had to save thirty four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I, to be honest, I didn't actually find this film as funny as the other two. And it's I a th- lot darker. Yeah, I I not that I, I think it it not that that's I think that's a kind of a good thing in some ways. It it wasn't trying to be recapture the comedy or try and be as funny as the other two and. With its darker story, I uh, yeah, it was it was really good. Um, yeah, as you said, all all the characters were great. Um, the 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 a lot of Nebula was a definitely a standout. There was a lot of key Nebula scenes that really made me laugh, especially the one with her and Star Lord about a quarter of the way, not a quarter of the way, about two about a third of the way. That that made me laugh a lot. You know, you know which scene I mean. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm just happy anytime Drax is on the screen. <laughs> mm. Drax, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I do see what you're saying about the comedy, but because it's a, a, a darker film, like mm. I don't think uh, any more jokes would have done it any oh, no, service. No. Like, I, I mean, look, look at Love and Thunder. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's like <laughs> they got James Gunn got the right balance of comedy and very emotional storytelling. Yeah, and of course you got to remember um, with. Like the events of Endgame and Infinity War, that was the Russo brothers writing. So yeah. the stuff that happened with Guardians, like he inherited that, and it's kind of like, right, how do I, how do I spin it back to what I was going to talk about? Because well, obviously you, you, you got Gamora, who's not the same Gamora. You got like Star Lord, like mm. dooming the entire race. It's like, yeah, how am I going to write around that? <laughs> you, you, know, you say that. I think, I think he did have a, a hand in Infinity War and Endgame. I think. I'm not completely sure, but I think the Russo brothers did ask him, uh, or at least he has he has a bit. He did contribute something, uh, not completely, because I think he has gone on record that he wasn't. He's not completely happy with how Star Lord acted towards Thanos in the final battle. But uh, yeah, I think he did. I think he ha- he did contribute something towards Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, I don't think he had a lot of control. Though, no, so I think no, that it's no. very minor. So. Yeah, very minor. No, I, honest, I really like, I thought Groot was really good in this. I don't know, I think Groot has been a, I, I think I've been a bit hit and miss with Groot ever since the second film, but I, I really enjoyed Groot in this film. I thought he was really, really fun. Um, oh, well, Groot from the beginning was kind of just like a one joke character, but the yeah. flesh came out quite a lot. And then I'm um, I love him in the second one. Baby Groot. Uh, my mum adores Baby Groot. We've got several Baby Groot things oh around the house. We've got we've got a fluffy toys. We've got a flower pot. I've got a little Lego <laughs> Baby Groot. Got Baby Groot mug. So yeah, we're, we're kind of fans of him. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's why I placed the second one so highly. It was like 
my mum likes it. It's like, come on, you can't dislike a film your mum loves, especially when I like it as well. Like, it's like, it's gone to the point like, oh, we're going to put a film on. Like, we're, we're having a shit day. What should we put on? Let's put on Guardians 2. We're going to have a laugh with that. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I don't, I don't really know. As you say, the uh, grand, is it great evolutionary? Yeah, he was a, he, he was a very good villain, a good foil to Rocket as a, a villain. Mm. I do like what Star Lord calls him. Like, he's like insulting him. Mm. Like, oh, so you Robocop and skeletal looking motherfucker. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you said Robocop. I'm interested in both. Yeah, you <laughs> that the, the first swear, uh, the first F. F-bomb as well. Yeah, it does. And uh, it's uh, so inconsequential. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, Get it's the fuck it's like, oh. Get the <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I kind of expected that, like, when the, when they hype something up, it's like, <laughs> okay. like I, 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 I knew it was co- coming at some point in the film, but I, I'm just like, well, we'll be where, wherever it is. Yeah. I tell you what, though, it's, it was kind of like water of a duck's back because like, a couple of days before, I uh, rewatched the uh, the James Gunn Suicide Squad, and there's so much swearing in there. Mm. <laughs> and when it happened in Guardians, it's like, did he swear? I, I don't know. <laughs> so was, oh, of course not. I thought. Mm. I think there. I think it was a word that I thought sounded like fuck, and so I was like, oh, is there two? But no, it was it's still only one. I think I just didn't hear it correctly, and so it sounded like a, a second fuck. Uh, no, they were referring to how. The duck. No, no, this is no nowhere near Howard the Duck. Yeah, no, nobody should be anywhere near Howard the Duck. Really? You got Cosmo. Cosmo got to do quite a bit in this film. I was very happy. Yeah, Cosmo well, space um, dog. I'm I'm fine with like um, Cosmo having female voice. I just think it's quite jarring because my only exposure to Cosmo is like from from the game first. So it's like uh, a, a, a Russian male voice. Ah, <laughs> like, uh, right. Uh, well, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, Cosmo is a very good dog. He, he, yep, Cosmo is a very good dog. Yeah. Wait, my dog's better. Wait, what? I don't know. I don't know. Is Freya got like telekinesis? Yeah, because she can read whenever the fuck I'm going to walk off. <laughs> um, so she will like, deep space and see what happens. She... Right, so here's another thing she's learned. Brandon, you're really quiet. <laughs> Why am I quiet? Right. <laughs> Quick, quick <laughs> like mic. hour in. Brandon, you're quiet. Yes, just, yes, just say that in like... After an hour of recording. <laughs> also, am it's I actually quiet? No, you seem quiet to me. Yeah. What? I'm so, wait, am I quiet or not? You seem the same to me. You seem better now. You sounded <laughs> a little bit distant to me a second ago. I'm away with it. Oh my God. I forgot what I was going to say now. Something about dogs. No, uh, gone. Well, you know, well, here's something else about, kind of about dogs. Although the dog hardly appears. I forgot to mention it last in the last episode. Uh, John Wick Four. I I've watched John Wick Chapter Four. It's good. Um, oh yes, John John Wick had a very good dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John Wick Four is really good. Yeah, it just it rounds out the story of all of the, the of all the films really well. I I mean, I was very tired, so about the first hour I kept falling asleep constantly. It was really annoying, but I still I still managed to go. Uh, I I knew what was going on. It just I kept it's annoying, and at least the last where it mattered it towards the end and all the best action scenes. I was uh firmly past the tiredness that em- enveloped me in, at the start. I had just worked as well, so that didn't help. No, it's, I don't know if any of you have seen the John Wick films. I've not seen any at all. I've seen the first one a couple of times. Cause I own that one. Um, and I've seen the second and third one. I watched them like back to back. And I tell you what, I can't really remember anything that happened in them. I This definitely feels like one of the, the best modern action films, like action franchises. Uh, it... I, I, it it just oozes with attitude every time with all these action set pieces and all the martial arts and uh, yeah it's it's great in this uh, fourth film it's got like Donnie Yen he's in it he plays a blind man uh, and he's it's Donnie Yen what can you say he's fantastic um, on that I it, it's just what you expect from if you watch one John Wick film you know what you're gonna expect it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger i had a bit of a i was a bit unsure with the third film the third film kind of feels a bit of a filler film but the fourth film kind of rectifies that a bit and so I, i'm i'm a bit I, I can now give the third film a bit of a pass now it's a it's made that makes the third film better which i i'm happy with uh yeah the, the, i mean the, the thing i always find with john wick definitely f- 
3 and 4 definitely feel like this. Sometimes the action set pieces just go on and on. And I'm uh, sometimes I'm in my mind, I'm like, does it need to be this long? <laughs> it, how necessary is all this violence? Mm. Like, it, it just gets quite exaggerated. I, I don't know, that's a bit like, oh, don't you want to watch... It's an action film, don't you want to watch action? But sometimes it just goes on, I'm like... <laughs> Does it? Does this action set piece needs to be this long? But yeah, that's 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 why you need a slower scene like between them to sort of slow everything down a bit and like get everyone caught up because otherwise it just turns into like white noise after a while. Some yeah, some of the action scenes do just feel like that. Uh, but they they all look great. That's the problem. Um, what, what there's one action scene that is quite funny. It it's essentially John Wick plays Frogger at the Arc de Triomphe in France, <laughs> in Paris, <laughs> essentially. He's trying to get across it, uh, and loads of hitmen are trying to kill him. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great, satisfying end to the the franchise. Um, yeah, that's now I just want to watch a Frogger film where he's getting chased <laughs> down by hitmen. <laughs> I mean, we've had the Tetris said... movie, and why not that? Then? Yeah. I was saying, I'm going to like when you said Frogger. The first thing that came to my mind is the YouTuber Frogger for Overwatch stuff. I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my mind. It just was. I've got no idea who that is. Neither do I. He's just an Australian guy who plays as Lucio in Overwatch. Uh, okay. I, I, I didn't realise that Matt Mercer was a played a character in Overwatch until recently. I was like, oh right. Who else? He plays. Well, he's not the character who got his name changed. Uh, what's he called? Okay. Oh, Cassidy. Um, Cassidy. Yeah, I didn't realise it. Matt Mercer played it's Cassidy. Fun. Yeah, makes complete What's sense he... now. Now I'm now I'm like, yeah, I I can. Yeah, it makes complete sense <laughs> that he plays the American. Um, yeah, no, John Wick's good. Yeah, yeah. Also, it had the uh, final appearance of the uh, the actor who uh, played the hotel manager. Yes, at... yes. Me. To be honest, he's hardly in the film. Uh, yeah. yeah, he gets killed off quite early in the film, to be honest. Um, he's doing yes. Sean Bean. Yeah, no, he's uh, he he put a great performance in uh, all the, well, all the John Wick films. He's he's also in. Funny enough, I've not even mentioned it since I start since it was on, but now the season's completely done. He all, he was also in The Legend of Vox Machina season two as the main the the main uh, dragon. Uh, so sadly, he won't be reprising his role. Uh, in the first season three, sadly, which would have been where they actually fight him, which is a shame. Yeah, he, it's uh, yeah, he he was a, he's a good, he's really good in John Wick. That's reminded me when I was um watching Guardians three, the the actor who plays the High Evolutionary. All the time, I was thinking, where do I know this guy from? Uh, he's in John Wick chapter two. Yeah, and he's he's also in Peacemaker, which. It's just another reason why you should all go and watch Peacemaker because it's great. I know you you uh, love to mention Peacemaker. You, I know <laughs> not that that's a, a bad thing. It's just like I've already mentioned it's like, it in one episode. <laughs> well, you say that, but you, yeah, you, true. But it's you. But messaging you messaged us about Peacemaker quite a few times. Yeah, when I was watching it, <laughs> true. Like over a year ago. True. Uh, still, it's good. Go go see yeah. it. I'll be I'll be watching the second series when it comes out. Mm. Well, I think that's it. There's not any, unless there's anything else. Literally, I've just done live stuff. I've not done any um, fancy stuff. It's been. I don't seem to be honest. I don't see myself doing much again either because I've got. Because um, now, obviously, I'm doing my PhD and it's like reaching the summertime. Things are like starting to ramp up. I'm just gonna be doing that late pretty much every day, and then weekends I'm now starting to train a puppy. You got plus, there's not even really any games coming out that really take my fancy i'm just still playing just my usual stuff arc nights overwatch and I'm, oh yeah that's one thing uh, we're gonna hopefully because i mentioned this ages ago how i'm playing the devil and me the dark pictures one and how buggy it is so hopefully by the next <laughs> actual podcast i'll probably finish it and see if it's still a buggy mess mm. so that'll be that'll be fun awesome. if it is i'm gonna be very very disappointed you also got download festival as well coming up I, I will, no that won't be the next recording no no but I know you've got Maybe that the next... I know you've got that coming up yeah. as well yes that won't be the next recording with the recording after oh, I, don't, I don't know I'm, I'm just saying in your life you've got that coming up not... yeah I've just got I've just got live stuff I've got no that's, that's what I meant yeah I've just got live stuff yeah, I do have actually, one more no... movie I can briefly mention go for it <laughs> Uh, so I watched the uh, the newest Tom Hanks film, A Man Called Otto. Uh, I'll keep this brief. 
it was okay. Of course, <laughs> um, you're going to say that. I, I was sold on the premise, like, because um, the premise of a man called Otto is Tom Hanks is an older gentleman who's just a miserable person and hates everyone. I was like, hmm. yeah, no, no, I like the idea of that. That sounds fun. And as the film goes on, he gets softened up by new neighbours and whatnot. And it pretty much goes exactly how you think it's going to go. Um, <laughs> it seems very bare bones and quite like, it, is this like a Hallmark film? <laughs> I, I really wanted to like it. And I kind of did at the beginning. I was like, oh, yeah, I, I, like, I like where this is going. And then it was like, oh, you know, not, not, not one trait about the character that you find fascinating. Let's make it less so and more boring <laughs> as the film goes on. But, oh. I don't want a happy ending. I want him to be a miserable bastard. I want him to tell piss people to piss on. <laughs> piss <laughs> off, uh, ghost. It's fun. It's fun because you, normally you don't see Tom Hanks do that. He's normally like a nice character in most of the films he's in. So uh, to see him play a miserable bastard, I thought it was quite refreshing. Mm. For like the 20 minutes it does it. <laughs> like, oh. really enjoyed, like, so I really enjoyed like the first half hour and then it's just like, right, okay. Um... We'll see where this is going. I mean, I suppose it's a nice film if you want that, but I wanted to see him being miserable as fuck. <laughs> and look, I only got that for a short dose. Uh, yeah, Man Called Ito. Watch it if you want. It's not terrible. It's just there. Mm, well, mm. I, uh, <laughs> I guess that's it for... That's a very short and sweet one, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think we've discussed everything we wanted to. Um... As I say, so you, so Brandon's going to do what he said about literally well, two minutes ago, which I can't remember already. <laughs> I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to try and play Callisto Protocol and get that done for the next episode, but we'll see. Work depending. Who knows? If I survive, because I'm also continuing the Weedle Only Challenge at the minute, <laughs> I'll pick that up again. So uh, you have to finish that. I really hope you can beat the Elite Four with like six level 100 Weedles. But my God, getting them to level 100 is going to be a pain. Brandon, yeah. I played it for three hours. <laughs> on the stream yesterday i made zero progress did you not Why? Right, what until the last moment i was at sylphco i beat like every grunt in there and that's like the only progress i made i started the stream wanting to beat koga and right up until the very last minute i had yet to do that <laughs> i well, suppose because like if you're getting zubats and stuff you're just doing like one damage every turn Oh, oh, less than that. Um, he has a muck, which is very tanky, resists all our moves, and keeps casting evade. So I'm just like, oh like, god, uh, minimize. So I, I was, I was, yeah, minimize. So uh, all my weedles, I, I like every attempt. I, they've got thirty five poison stings. Every like, and all six of them have missed like every single one. But then he just does sludge bomb and kills them out, right? So uh, yeah, I only won like one minute before the end of my stream on the very last attempt before I was going to throw in the towel because by sh some miracle we managed to take Muck down and I had two of my lowest level Weedles left and his last wheezing just did self destruct straight away and I don't know why he did that because that was his last Pokemon so we just won because <laughs> I had one Weedle left and didn't do anything. It's like oh okay. <laughs> So uh, the the run's back on. <laughs> I was gonna, I was genuinely gonna call it. And say I'm not doing this anymore because <laughs> I, I I found out that the in-game clock maxes out at 255 hours. It doesn't go up anymore. <laughs> so God well, how knows how long that room now. Uh, I, I bet I'm around 300 hours. Easy. Jesus. But Christ. I don't know. I don't know. It only goes up to 255. That's the thing about Pokemon Red and Blue. I didn't know. <laughs> Game clock messes out. Of that. Uh, yeah, even the uh, even the games like saying we're not even going to bother counting anymore. Please stop. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, but now I've got Sabrina, and Sabrina's psychic, and uh, that's super effective against all my uh, Weedles and oh, Alakazam. Uh, I'm fucked. <laughs> uh, and now it's speeds because Alakazam speed. It's a speedy boy. Uh, you're, gonna need, you're literally going to need 99 revives, 99 ethers, 99 elixirs, just anything. Yeah, and. Um, the moment I do that, they'll just go straight and die again. Because and I've also got a uh, Blaine Fire. Oh, good! All my Weedles are weak to that. Uh, <laughs> Giovanni. Oh, Ground type. Was this all my poison moves? Oh, actually, I'm kind of less worried about that one. I'm actually more worried about Bruno than anyone else in the Elite Four. I say Bruno's gonna suck. But I have said to chat, right? I'm gonna do the rare candy glitch because I already have like one weed at like level 62. And, like the rest are like my highest other one is like 55 and then like, in 40s and like. But I'm just gonna use rare candies. I'm not gonna do like so everyone's like level 100. I'm only gonna do it like a couple of levels here and there from just not making progress, just to save sodding time. Because <laughs> um, like the game counter's already given up, so it's not gonna go up anymore. So my sanity it's like all i'm doing is skipping the grind that's literally it <laughs> yeah. other than that yeah so if i'm still alive from that then we should be good to record again in two weeks and it's just like mentally defeated i really was like gonna throw it in i was I just like, if, if i hadn't have done it pogo on that the very last attempt i would have said i'm not doing this anymore i've already delayed this like several times it's like 
like months between attempts at the same run. <laughs> it's like other than grind, there's nothing I can do. And it takes has anyone else done we will only run to like you or are you like the only one? I I think they have, but they use items in battle, and I'm not doing that. I said he use like X defend and all that jazz, but I'm not doing that. I think it cheapens the challenge. I suppose it's just like a sort of evil necessity. <laughs> it seems to be. I know if you like doing magic harp only, you have to. It's just not going to do it. Well, no, I'm not fucking doing that. <laughs> this is enough. Oh, man. Well, yeah, don't do it, kids. Don't do it. Play Dead Space Remake instead. Big catch piece only. That way you can get stuck as soon as you go into the ghost tower in uh, Lavender Town. Struggle, mate. Struggle. Well, you know where we are on social media. On all all, all of the social media. Yeah, we are, well, it's wherever you're listening to this right now or on all your favourite podcast places. Yeah, you know you know how it is. Uh, all the links are in the, in the description of the episode, as always. And uh, you'll hear us in two weeks, unless uh, you of you have anything more to say. I like my dog. <laughs> I like my dog too. She's a good dog. I like my dog too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tell us in the comments everything about your pets. Love your pets. Whatever you do. And yeah. now I want to watch Doggos of the Galaxy. I'm going to watch Marley and Me. I really. was going to say. I, was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I love a happy ending. <laughs> oh yes a happy ending in Marley and me yes sure <laughs> sure you know what with how old that film is now uh, that dog's definitely dead <laughs> it's definitely gone well that's a very cheerful ending it really is <laughs> you know what's you know what you can't do in Tears of the Kingdom you still can't pet the fucking dogs what oh fuck that then <laughs>